Hello friends. So today we are going to study one of the very important aspects of highway geometric design and that is the sight distance. So basically what is sight distance? Sight distance is that distance which is required to be available for the driver at any moment of time okay, for various operations. Now for example there is one sight distance that is the minimum sight distance which is the stopping sight distance. The stopping sight distance or the SSD should be available for the driver free of his vision at any moment of time so that the driver may see that particular distance at any moment of time so that if there is any kind of obstruction or any kind of requirement of applying the brakes, the driver can apply the brakes and stop the vehicle without colliding with any other vehicle or any other obstruction. So let us see in detail what is side distance and in particularly today in this video lecture we'll be discussing about the stopping side distance, about the calculations of stopping side distance, about the importance of stopping side distance. So dear friends, when we say side distance, it is clear to all of you that it is the minimum distance required to be visible on the road for drivers so that a particular operation such as stopping, overtaking, etc., can be completed if required to avoid any kind of accident. Now, we will see what is stopping site distance and what comprises the stopping site distance. Okay, so top, the stopping site distance is also called as SSD. It is the minimum distance available on a highway at any spot which should be of sufficient length so as to stop a vehicle traveling at a design speed safely without collision with any other obstruction. This minimum side distance available is known as the stopping side distance. So the stopping side distance or the SSD comprises of two distances. See, it is distance. Stopping side distance is the distance. It is always measured in meters so how much amount because when you apply the brakes it, 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 it will not happen that the vehicle will stop instantly it will take it will move for a few meters so what is that minimum amount of meters that the vehicle will move after application of brakes that is the stopping side distance now see dear friends the stopping side distance is comprised of two different distances one is the lag distance and another one is the braking distance so what is lag distance and what is braking distance? Very simple. Lag distance is that distance in which the driver has not applied the brakes. The driver sees some obstructions, sees some requirement for applying of brakes and the driver decides that the driver will be applying the brakes. So that particular moment, it is the reflex moment when the driver will react to that obstruction in his brain that I have to do something. That particular moment is the the distance that the vehicle will travel in that moment is the lag distance. So what is the time requirement in which the lag distance will occur? That is the reaction time of the driver. And next, the driver, after the application of brakes, the vehicle will move a certain distance. And then that distance is the braking distance. So we'll see one by one what is the lag distance and what is the braking distance. Already I have said that lag distance is the distance traveled in reaction time by the driver that is the time taken to decide whether the brakes are to apply or not see when you calculate lag, lag distance in some kind of problems you will find that the uh, reaction time of the driver is given whether it is two seconds 2.5 seconds or three seconds okay but the indian road congress has recommended the value of reaction time to be 2.5 seconds so dear friends when you when there is no re value of reaction time given to you you will consider a reaction time to be 2.5 seconds. So lag distance, we know distance is equal to velocity into time, velocity into reaction time. So it is given by V into TR. V is in meter per second, T is in seconds, the velocity of the vehicle in meter per second and TR is the uh, reaction time. So see, if the velocity is in kilometer per hour, if it is given that the velocity of your vehicle is 80 kilometers per hour, and the reaction time is suppose 2.5 seconds. What will be the log distance? How will you calculate it? So to convert the velocity of kilometer per hour to meter per second, we multiply it by 0 0.278. When you multiply it by 0 0.278, that the velocity gets converted to meter per 
second okay you will be able to know how we have got this 0.278 it is like meter kilometer per hour that means one kilometer is equal to 1000 meter one hour is equal to 3600 seconds so 1000 divided by 3600 gives you 0 0.278 okay so uh, when you multiply the capital V that is suppose 80 kilometer per hour with 0 0.278 what do you obtain you obtain the velocity in meter per second so do not get confused when you suddenly if you by heart the formulas that like distance equal to 0.278 into capital V into TR TR and in exam suddenly you get that okay this is kilometer per hour and this is in seconds so how this kilometer per hour and seconds we will be able to use in one equation because you, you you cannot use two different units in one equation this kilometer per hour and this is seconds but see mind it this is not kilometer per hour when you multiply it by 0 0.278 this 0 0.278 into capital V gets itself converted to meter per seconds so dear friends I feel that you have understood this concept if you have not understood, you can pause the video here and take some time to realize that how this particular value is also in meter per seconds. Okay. So ultimately the lag distance will come in meters. Okay. So next we want to discuss something about the PIEV theory. Though this is something which is not related to civil engineering or something, but as a transportation engineer, we know we need to understand what is this PIEV theory because the reaction time that we have said to be 2.5 seconds it comes out from this particular piev theory where p is the perception e is intellection e is i is intellection e is emotion and v stands for volition so what happens that when you see that certain there is when the driver observes that there is a certain obstruction then this particular piev occurs in the brain and the spinal cord and in the system of the driver which takes approximately 2.5 seconds so what is perception it stands it is the time required to send a signal from eye to brain so when you suddenly observe that okay there is some obstruction i have to stop the vehicle then there is a signal being sent from your eye your eye will observe and that signal will be reaching your brain then comes your thoughts the driver will require the time to rearrange compare different thoughts and that particular time is the intellection all these are fractions of seconds actually so after rearranging the driver will require some time due to emotional sensations such as fear anger etc when, when the driver will observe that there is certain obstruction the driver may be occupied by fear or anger or other emotional feelings so this time is the e the next is V, which stands for volition, and that is the time required for final decision. That whether I will stop the vehicle or no, I will somehow maneuver the vehicle and I can pass on this obstruction. That is the decision that has been taken and that time required is known as volition. So I hope you have understood what is PIEV. There is schematic diagram that P, it starts from the spinal cord, there is a response, then this uh, goes to the brain, okay, from the eye to the brain, that signal is being sent through the spinal cord. And from brain, in the brain, there will be intellection and emotion, and then the brain will uh, instruct the, your hands or your legs, the hands will be moving the steering, the legs will be moving the brakes and accelerators to ultimately do the action, that is the volition, okay? So I hope that you have understood how we have obtain the lag distance and what theory we have behind this lag distance it is the PIEV theory sometimes in objective questions in a competitive exams you get uh, questions related to this PIEV what does P stand for what the I what E or what does V stands for so next is the braking distance so what is the braking distance it is the distance traveled by the vehicle or the car after you apply the brakes you decided to apply the brakes you take the took the time to decide take this side you move the leg distance and after decision you apply the brakes then also there is certain movement occurs after the application of brakes that is the braking distance how do you obtain the braking distance we obtain it by equating the work done against friction in stopping the vehicle and the kinetic energy lost i have given you the equations you already know the equation of kinetic energy is half mb square and the work done is what is work done force into displacement what is the force coefficient of friction multiplied by the weight that is the mass into acceleration due to gravity so if you equate half mb square into 
equal to f m z l we obtain that l is equal to v square by twice g f okay uh, but where this l is nothing but the breaking distance in meter per seconds the value of g is 9.81 meter per second square so it's very simple you know the lagging this the lag distance you know the breaking distance what is stop stopping side distance v into tr plus v square by 2g f if it is in kilometer per hour very simple you multiply the kilometer velocity in kilometer per, per hour with 0.278 it automatically gets converted to meter per second when it is v square it will be 0 0.278 into capital v whole square okay there are certain things which uh, uh, we will see here see if the brake efficiency is 100 percent okay if you apply the brake and the brake is in very good condition the brake the, then the brake efficiency is said to be in 100 percent and then the coefficient of friction will be f if brake efficiency is k percent then the coefficient of friction will be k multiplied by f that is k by 100 you see this is a k percentage that means k out of 100 multiplied by f that is 0 0.01 k f okay now if there is a gradient or slope of n percent n percent if there is a slope of the road then that slope affects the brake if it's an upward slope when you apply the brakes the vehicle will stop in a less go less distance if it's a downward slope after applying of brakes also the vehicle will go more distance okay so in that case what we will do is we will have to add or subtract the slope okay if it is an ascending gradient then we will add the slope to the friction if it is a descending gradient then we have to take negative slope that is minus the uh, we have to subtract the value of 0 0.01 n from friction coefficient of friction f okay so i request all of you to kindly note this down in your notebook and try to understand the formulas it's very simple the formula is v into tr plus v square by 2g f okay but what happens when there is coefficient of friction uh, breaking breaking efficiency is given to you then what you will do when it is 2 g f with f you multiply the break efficiency it will be 0 0.01 k f okay and if there is slope is given to you then it will be 0 0.01 k f plus minus 0 0.01 of slope okay so if you know the basic formula then you can play with it very nicely so again i am telling you pause the video lecture over here make the notes of it try to understand it take your time okay do not move forward if you have not understood whatever has been discussed till now things are very simple i am very sure that all of you will understand it so moving forward the stopping side distance is the summation of leg distance plus breaking distance v t r plus v square by 2 g f so simple i request all of you to learn this formula now itself do not think that i will learn it afterwards before the exam learn it take your take some time and learn it that stopping side distance equal to vtr plus v square by 2 gf moving forward different cases of side distances okay so the side distances that is the stopping side distance will be a little bit different if they from case to case if it is a one lane road and one way traffic then the side distance requirement will be of only one ssd ssd whatever you calculate for that design speed for that road is the side distance that should be every time available on the road if this is the road that much side distance the side distance is suppose 75 meters so that 75 meters um, view vision should always be open for the driver now uh, if it is not a one lane one way traffic road if it is a one lane road having two way traffic okay then it is also called meeting site distance or intermediate side distance. so it's the vehicles will come from both the directions if one stops it will not happen the other also should stop so when they are in both directions this should be able to see from here to here this should be able to see from here to here so what happened that the, if the design speed is 80 kilometer per hour both are coming at 80 kilometer per hour we suppose then both should have the side distance available so this stopping side distance requirement for we have to add for both the vehicles since it's a one -way lane two -way, two way traffic if it's a two lane two way then it is no problem the vehicles if this stops after passing this vehicle then also it will not collide but since it's a one lane two way traffic therefore we should be able to have more amount of side distance that is the twice ssd for any other cases like two lane road or three lane or multi lane road 
we need only one SSD. I also like to tell you that the stopping side distance is also known as headlight side distance. The headlight of a vehicle should always be able to reach that stopping side distance. That much amount of vision should be provided during night time by the headlight of your vehicle. So dear friends, I'm giving you one problem. You try it yourself. You have to calculate the minimum required side distance for a highway with design speed of 90 km per hour. Very simple, V is given to you. When there is one lane two-way traffic, very simple. I have already explained what will be the case in one lane two-way traffic. The reaction time is given as 2.5 seconds. Coefficient of friction is 0 0.30. See, coefficient of friction, if it is not given as 0 0.30, we will take it as 0 0.35. This question was asked in engineering service examination 1998. I hope as an engineer, all of you know what is an engineering service examination. It is conducted by UPSC to recruit uh, employees in central government departments like Indian Railways, Military Engineering Services, and Public Work Departments. Many of you might be interested in joining such positions. So for that, you have to prepare for this kind of UPSC examinations. So you will be very happy to see that such easy problems are asked in UPSC exams also. I know every one of you will be able to get these answers, okay? So with this, we would like to conclude for today, the stopping site distance. And I hope it is clear to all of you what is the importance of sight distance, what is the importance of stopping sight distance. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much.